Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we appreciate your attendance this afternoon uh, to my president's speaker series here at uh, TCC Connect Campus. It is great to have attendees from all our campus locations, faculty, staff, and others uh, joining us for our conversation this afternoon. Uh, the goal of these sessions is to bring in experts to discuss timely topics. Uh, as you know, we are a college and we want to inform, educate, share and engage our community in these important topics that uh, help us improve our lives. This afternoon, our session is expert HR strategies, job prospects during COVID. And our guest today is Dr. Diane Sanchez. Dr. Diane Sanchez, is the founder and president of DAS HR Consulting LLC, a firm focused on creative, cre creative and non-traditional human resources programs and services that drive business results. Dr. Sanchez and Sanchez and Associates also consults on the Hispanic, Latino, millennial, um, and the investment in great performance. Our associates are specialists in all areas of human resources, organizational management, and Hispano, Hispanic, I'm sorry, Latino workforce. She has over 30 years of experience and has held executive human, human resources positions with both the private and public companies, including the DFW International Airport, United Natural Foods, Boeing, a commercial airplane, American Airlines, and some of her specialties uh, in her consulting uh, are strategic planning, disc assessment, strength training, recruiting, diversity, succession planning, talent management. And she has been also involved in uh, speaking engagements and seminars as they relate to Hispanic, Latino millennials, Gen Y, leadership skills for managers, generations in the workplace, time traps, learning how to maximize your time. I may need to get that training. Uh, <laughs> human resources essentials uh, and conflict management skills for uh, managers. It is my pressure, pleasure, I'm sorry, to uh, in, uh, introduce and uh, share this stage with my friend and colleague, Dr. Diane Sanchez, which by the way is not in the, in the bio, but we serve together as a, in the board of directors for ENTAC, a North Texas area community health centers. And actually a secret that will stay within us is that Dr. Sanchez recruited me. So uh, Dr. <laughs> Sanchez, uh, welcome and thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, you can take it away. Well, thank you, Dr. Morales. Uh, what a great introduction. Um, Dr. Morales is the president of uh, NTAC, so uh, it is one of our uh, nonprofits, very passionate. Um, so thank you for that beautiful introduction. So today I'm going to talk about COVID and what's next. Uh, the new employment opportunities. Uh, I know I'm speaking both to faculty as well as students. So I'm going to try to meet your needs um, regarding this. So let's start. Um, right now, I just want to explain, uh, you know, my dissertation and my uh, PhD is in generations. So I ever look at the generations. So people should know that 50% of the workforce is millennials, which is Gen Y and Gen Z. So they're mostly our students uh, and I teach as well. I teach at Amberton University and other various um, universities, but this is the crux of who is going to be in our workplaces and they are changing our workplace very, very quickly. And why they're changing the workplace is because of their technology knowledge and thank goodness we had these two generations during covid because they understood what we were going through now that we're no longer that much in the workplace but we are now uh using the internet using things like this technology teams and zoom and anything else uh, and they're helping us to do it 
So 23% of the population is millennials. And as you can see, Gen Z is going to be bigger than any generation we've ever had, even bigger than the baby boomers. And that's Gen Z's, you know, 23 and younger is what I'm talking about. So let me explain what's changed. The work trends post COVID. And I want you to understand the complexity that has happened in our work since COVID. So there's an increase remote working, right? We know that, uh, especially now that we've been hearing that COVID is going up. Uh, we've had the most COVID um, yesterday, uh, hospitalizations as well, uh, but we want to make sure uh, that our work is continuing. And I don't think we're going to have another shutdown uh, to our businesses, but we're going to have to modify. And that has been a business challenge for all of us, uh, particularly when it's person to person. And, you know, sadly, yesterday I heard that uh, my movie theater in uh, South Lake is, is closing. Um, and that is very sad, very, very sad, which is, I'm sorry, forgot to turn off my phone, uh, which is very, very sad. And, um, and some of our restaurants, which is person to person, where most of our students, uh, particularly in high school and colleges have worked. Uh, but uh, the newer positions are mostly technical, and I will share that with you. So most of the businesses are doing remote working. The expanded data collection is tracking work computer usage and monitoring employee emails and internal communications and chat. While some companies track productivity, others are monitoring employee engagement and well-being. Because we cannot be together as employees, we are doing a lot more chatting, a lot more emailing, a lot more Zooming or Teams. So it has become a pressure for our IT department to track the computer usage. And that's the expanded data collection to ensure that our employees and our businesses are interacting as much as they can. A contingent worker. This is a really big deal and it has been growing, which means that you're not an employee. And it started with the millennials because the millennials didn't want to work for a company. They wanted projects. They wanted more um, experience in the workplace. Uh, and so the millennials started just wanting to work on projects. Well, the Zoomers are the same way, although they want to be hired more by a company. But 32% of companies say they're going to hire contingent workers and not employees, what we call the gig economy. And companies are hiring for skills. They're not hiring right now for jobs. And the reason is, is because our jobs are in flux, right? We don't know what we don't know. So uh, my son works at a grocery store and there's jobs there that didn't used to be, which was monitoring, the um, grocery area that people don't touch the fruit and they're counting people that come into the grocery store and they're cleaning all the, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, bags you get or the, you know, the grocery um, uh, carriages, okay? We didn't used to have those kind of jobs. And so jobs are flexing, um, you know, in the business world, uh, in healthcare, 
their jobs are flexing and what we call pivot. We have to pivot the jobs and pivot the priorities. And so with that, we want to hire more contingent workers until we understand what's going to happen after COVID and what kind of jobs are really going to be more, quote, secure. We want to hire these contingent workers for their skills. And so that shouldn't be something we worry about or you students worry about. I think it's great because you learn different skills as a contingent worker. You go here and work for Tom Thumb, and then you go here and work for a tech company, uh, or you work here and you go to GameStop. Um, and so it's really kind of cool that you're learning all these things as a contingent worker and a contingent worker quote is a 1099 which means that you're being paid by project instead of being an employee the downside of that is you don't get comp you don't get benefits so you have to pay for your own benefits but if you're under 23 years old under the current obamacare you can be on your parents health care so it's kind of cool up until you're 23. Now, number four is expanded employer role as a social safety net. So let me explain that. The pandemic has increased the trend for employers to play an expanded role in their employees financial, physical and mental well-being. And it's not like we didn't do that before, but we need to do it even more now. So we're supporting things like enhanced sick leave, financial assistance, assistance, adjusted hours of operations, child care provisions. Some organizations are supporting, some of the companies are supporting the community for instance, by shifting operations to manufacturing goods and providing services to help combat the pandemic and offering community relief funds and free community services. So our role as companies and employers is really intensifying more than we had already done uh, particularly around our employees because do not underestimate the financial, physical and mental well-being that all of us have had during these last I don't know, nine months. I know I have, um, you know, socially just as a people person need to feel people around me and it has been a challenge. So employers are understanding that and they're talking to doctors and they're talking to psychologists and they're talking to financial planners um, to understand how they can be a better employer. Number five is separation of critical skills and roles. And we were doing that prior to COVID, but now it's a really big. And that means that we are pushing the boundaries in viewing the employee experience. So we're employing people now that have the skills because our jobs are in flux, right? So you may not have the jobs you used to have pre-COVID. And so now as employers, we have to look and pivot at our jobs. Well, our jobs are not there. They're fluid. So we're hiring people for their skills, the critical skills and capabilities that our organizations need to ensure our strategic goals. And those roles are critical to the success of 
our organizations. So there's less focus on roles or jobs, right? And more focus on skills that really affect the companies. So we're encouraging our employees to develop critical skills that potentially open up multiple opportunities for their career development rather than preparing them for a strategic for a specific role. So offering greater career development support to our employees is critical. So this is what's happening. We're asking our employees to get certifications and certifications you get at community colleges. You can get some at four year colleges, but the two year colleges have really got the lock on certifications and TCC has so many certifications for credit, not for credit. And that is in technology, that is in business. There's a lot, and I'm sure Dr. Morales is gonna talk about that because I'm not a TCC specialist, but I am telling you that that's what organizations and companies are looking for, is the critical skills that we can use and that we can put you in different roles, not just one role. And I'll talk a little bit about that more in my presentation. Number six is emergence of new top tier employers. So some CEOs, right, um, were pre Pre-COVID, we're already facing increased employee demands for transparency on their compensation, on how they pick people. So now employees and prospective candidates are going to judge the organizations that they work for, either as a contractor or as an employee, by the way in which we treat our employees during the pandemic. And people are asking, okay, I see it in my interviews that I do, is, hey, how are you treating your employees now during this pandemic? And so the, the future employees or contractors are balancing that decision on how the companies do and what the companies are doing. CEOs now also have to be transparent about potential salary cuts. Most of you know that our executives make a lot of money um, and it's a financial impact and therefore executives really need to be transparent about how they are cutting executive pay and how they're cutting management pay because this has really affected mostly the frontline individual employees and so they want to make sure uh, as a new top tier employer uh, that hey are we cutting uh, in the right places on executive pay, on management pay? Are we ensuring that we're taking care of our employees and their families during this pandemic? And that's what it means emerging to a new top tier employer. Employers are now going to be judged on how they dealt with this pandemic and Normally, they had never been judged on that. Okay, so number seven, transition from designing for efficiency to designing for resilience. So 55% of organizations redesigned their organizations pre-COVID were focused on streamlining roles 
supply chain and workflows to increase efficiency. While this approach captured efficiencies, it also created fragilities as systems have no flexibility to respond to disruptions. Resilient organizations were better able to respond and they would quickly be able to respond to change. The other thing is these transitions quickly, these organizations designed roles around skills and flexibility. And that's what I'm going to show you is super important for our future leaders, our students right now, is that they have to be able to understand the skills they have and be flexible and be able to change priorities pretty quickly. So that is what I mean by transitioning from designing from efficiency to designing for resilience is how can you meet the needs of change and can you accept change and pivot quickly as we go through a pandemic and we don't know what's going to happen in the next year so Planning is very difficult for corporations right now. And then we have a financial crisis we have to deal with. We have unemployment at about 12, 13 percent here. So there's a bunch of things that companies have to think about as they try to manage their organizations. And then, you know, eight increased uh, increase organization complexity. This the information technology section <laughs> of companies are just constantly, constantly being challenged and that is by uh, technology. So if you have a skill in technology and you will see in my presentation that you are one of the great, great um, contractors or employees that we want to have. OK, so here are the 21st century skills that students need to have to be competitive in a changing job market. And on the left, you'll see learning skills. We call them the four C's. It's critical thinking, creativity, collaboration and communication. And what I mean by that is communication. You have to be able to communicate verbally. You have to be able to com communicate uh, on the phone, in Zoom, in writing, all of that. Collaboration is you have to be able to work in a team. And me as a college professor, I constantly give team group projects, which most of my students can't stand. But I do that because I know that most of our companies want you to work on a team. And if you can't work on a team, then you probably can't work in an organization because now we are looking for all different types of ideas. And that goes to creativity. We need creativeness on anything. I mean, right now it's a blank sheet of paper. How can we survive as companies? How do we get to our customers? How do we run our organization? And critical thinking, this is what I tell my students. Great, great. Tell me, so what? So what? your ideas. So what does that matter? How is that going to change our organization, our business, our customers, all of that? That's critical thinking. So what with these ideas? Literacy is how do you deal with information? Can you deal with media? 
technology. And some of us struggle, I admit, I struggle with technology. I had to practice for this like two hours, okay? I am not good on technology and media and information. So how do you are able to discern all of this and make it apply to the business? And then flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity. Those are just life skills. How are you flexible? Do you have the leadership to be on a team? Do you have the leadership to participate in group projects, being a manager? Do you show initiative or does somebody have to tell you what to do? Um, are you productive and are you social? Because a lot of this now is teams. And if you can't get along with your team, that's a challenge. Now, I'm going to show you a really quick video. And the reason why I show this video is because it's one of the ways to find out what the current skills you have, what the skills you need, and what kind of jobs are available for you. So go for it. There's no volume, I don't think. And then we help learners inventory. Skills Match helps learners connect their interests and skills to career opportunities and education. Here's how it works. First, we identify the learner's goal. Next, we gather their education history. And then we help learners inventory their skills. For example, learners can browse skills they acquired by education. With each skill, learners can indicate if they already have it or if it's a skill that they want to learn. After selecting skills using one method, learners can explore other ways of adding skills, by jobs they've held, for example, or by skills that they're already interested in. When done, learners are shown related skills they might not have thought of or seen on previous steps. Here's the results page where we show learners the career areas that their interests and skills match to. Learners can click into a career area of interest to learn more, where they can see the top in demand skills for that career area, how their have and want skills fit, and what gaps they'll need to fill to be competitive. This is also where we suggest personalized educational offerings based on skills the user wants or needs, what the market is looking for, and what your institution has to offer, whether it's a single course or a full program. And finally, they can see live job postings matched to the skills they want or already have. Narrowing these results by region allows users to learn which skills are most valuable to specific companies in specific areas. That's how Skills Match helps learners connect their interests and skills to career opportunities and education. So, uh so um, I encourage you all to go into it. I love it. It's a fantastic free way to find out what skills you have, what skills you need, potential jobs that are out there, but um, it also talks about certifications and how critical certifications are um, and you know multiple certifications. So let's talk about the top growing industries, transportation and warehousing. And that's not driving trucks and that's not driving, you know, forklifts. Most of transportation and warehousing have gone technical, robots, and they need people to um, monitor those robots. So Amazon is here. And if you've ever toured their facility, very few people, lots of robots, lots of um, computerized things. And so we call that manufacturing engineering. It's really monitoring the technology 
to do what is needed. Um, Health care and social assistance very much. Uh, you know, right now mental health is big. Health care, uh, everything like that has just been growing. Obviously, finance and insurance. Uh, construction has always been pretty big, um, but professional, specific, uh, I'm sorry, scientific and technical skills. Um, now, retail has dropped since last year. Um, so, and government. So, you can see the top three um, are, are growing industries in professions. Here's the top industry earnings. And uh, this is earnings per worker. Utilities are big. And the reason why, it's all technological. It's no longer manual work, except for the guys that go up the poles and click everything. Utilities is all done by technology. Uh, same with mining, oil and gas, um, management of companies, enterprise, finance, manufacturing engineers, information. So. These are the top industries and you can see in utilities it's 150,000 or more and same with gas, you know, gas and, and oil. Um, it really is uh, and and you know, I have a four year degree, but my children do not and I encourage them to go to, you know, they both went to TCC and to get certifications because some people can't afford a four year college. Well, companies aren't necessarily looking for a four year college. They're looking for certifications. And by the way, TCC gives a great education because I've gone through some of the classes and I'm thinking, wow, I taught at UTA. I teach at SMU. These are really good classes that prepare you. Some of my best students were from TCC. So I always tell everybody, hey, go your first two years to TCC, get as many certifications as you can. If you need to be employed, great, get a job, but come back to a four year college and you will be way prepared. Uh, for any four year college. Now, here's the top occupations in the 21st century. Computer uh, occupations. Hands down, get your Microsoft certification, get your whatever certification that has to do with computers. Drafting, engineering, and what I mean by engineering techs, it's really monitoring those computer systems at Amazon and other Lockheed and all these companies that are constantly looking at the data and need analysis of it. So this might all sound really like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's it's if I can do it, you can do it. It's super easy. It's analysis. It's computerized already. You're looking at the data. You're saying, hey, there's an uptick here. There's a downtick here. This robot didn't didn't do well. This one did. <laughs> um, and then life and physical social sciences. But let me be more specific. Nursing and physician assistants, and I know TCC has a great, great program, and that's where we're going. Uh, some of my um, clients are hospitals and, and clinics. These are the people that they're starving for, and let me tell you, the compensation's pretty awesome. So getting your certification in any of that, electrical technicians, anything certifications. There's tons of certifications, manufacturing and, me and mechanical engineers, technicians. 
You start as a technician, you get your certification, you go to an engineer. You can't go to a full fledged engineer till you get your certification that shows that you have certain skills in that program. Uh, not necessarily most companies right now are starving for these people. And so if you get into a company with your certification and AA degree, most of them have tuition reimbursement. So if you can't afford college, the rest of the four year college, they will pay for it as long as you showing that you have initiative and you want to be there. That's what they're going to invest in. They're going to want an employee that's going to be there. Next data science school psychologist. They're starving for school psychologists, IT specialist, quality control, cyber security technicians. TCC has a certification, which I just learned today. That is amazing. That is one of the hardest jobs to fill. Help desk analysts, us people that need help and technology. So, and cyber analysts. There's a difference between te technicians and analysts. It's looking who is infiltrating your system. So, um, awesome jobs. Okay, I'm gonna switch and pivot um to what can you do as a student to build your opportunity to find a job you have to be on linkedin you have to update your pro profile on a regular basis because i'm a recruiter all day long and i go to linkedin i don't go to facebook i don't go to twitter i don't go to snapchat i go to linkedin because it's the professional place to put your profile. Create your personal video. Put a video out there. Make sure people see who you are. Be visible and professional. Highlight your skills. There's a whole skill section that you need to put there and fill it up. If you've got certifications, if you've participated in any community events, put it there create a network database invite somebody like me who's a recruiter okay those are the and let me tell you we're looking all day long for people who really really want to work in an organization that is constantly changing so if you don't like change right now is not the play, time to be looking but make sure you have a clear brief message to deliver and never stop updating it always put something out there that you're interested share um ted talks that you find interesting uh, if you go out to mine you'll see i post a lot um so connect with me on linkedin now interviewing post covid uh update your profile like i said practice with a friend because right now um i just hired five people and it was all through zoom and they couldn't go into their workplace um because of of covid so people are still hiring they're hiring post covid but they're doing it all on zoom or teams or whatever technology platform you're on. You need to practice on those. You need to make sure you're looking good. You're dressed well. You come across well. You look into um, uh, the the camera. Um, your interview will be recorded. So make sure uh, that you know that. Show enthusiasm. Be prepared with questions. Um, an employer knows that you're not interested if you don't have questions. If you don't have questions, you shouldn't be on the interview. Have questions about the company, how they're reacting to COVID, how they're reacting to changes in the environment, uh, the work environment. All of those questions should be 
something you do on a regular basis for interviews. If you don't have those questions, they're not going to feel like you're interested in the job. Now, here are the top employers in Tarrant County and they're hiring. OK, I don't know if you know Louis Vuitton came here, North Fort Worth. Um, I'm on the Workforce Solutions Board, so I always get to go the ri ribbon cutting. Louis Vuitton just opened up a manufacturing facility up on um, the north side of Fort Worth, and everything is technical. Robots, just like Amazon. Oh, I didn't put Amazon here. Um, all technology, Texas Health Resources, um, JPS, Klein Tools is a wonderful, wonderful company. Got voted one of the best companies to work for here in Tarrant County. You've got another opportunity to work is in the government. They are dying, dying to employ people. Great benefits, great retirement, and they take care of people. Six Flags is hiring big time, UNT, Gaylord, my dear friend, uh, Gracie Vega is the Vice President of Human Resources at the Gaylord, uh, always looking for systems engineers, HR people. So there's opportunities um, that you can see um, out there. So if you go to Workforce Solutions, the jobs are always posted there. Um, and there's each way to DFW, each way to apply. But like I said, you know, get your ducks in a row, be ready, get your skills assessment, get your LinkedIn profile all ready and you know, be ready. Letters of recommendation from your um, your professors is always a great plus. And I thank you so much for your time. I've gone 45 minutes. Questions that you have. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanchez. We actually have some really good questions that came in while you were presenting. And our first one um, is about the workplace. It's do you think that after the pandemic um, is over that the workplace will go back to being the same? Absolutely not. All right. And do you have anything to add? I'm sure they're wondering why. What What do you think? I think um, I, I think that this pandemic is going to go on for about two years. Um, we don't have a vaccine. Um, uh, and as you heard, we've got, you know, uh, I mean, Texas today has hit a million COVID positives. Um, I don't see it getting better. And the workplace is ensuring the safety and security of their employers. So I think we're going to rely more on technology. And um, so I think, like I said, companies, the word pivot is a big deal right now, is we've got to pivot our businesses to uh, align with what's happening. So I think for you know at least next year, I don't see it changing. But, you know, I hope I'm wrong, uh, but I really, uh, I, I don't, most HR practitioners uh, in my role say, look, uh, and, and consult with businesses how they're going to hire, engage employees, you know, job, we're not writing job descriptions, we're doing skill assessments. Um, I think it's going to be very different. Well, thank you for letting us know what we might expect in the coming coming years. Um, another question we had that was a really good one, and it kind of touches on a few things you've talked about already, but which certifications do you specifically think would be helpful for promotion? Any IT ones. Microsoft, uh, cybersecurity is a great one. Um, I, I looked at TCC, any of the techies, and I think Dr. Morales can speak more on the certifications, but um, 
the the uh, technology communication platforms. That's big. Uh, communication technology platforms are really big right now. Um, any of those jobs, and of course, you know, uh, in the healthcare industry, big school too, psychologists. You know, it's just. Um, any of those certifications are, are going to be significant. Perfect. And we also had some attendees that wanted to know about the career prospects in the fields of education and social sciences. What are your thoughts on those? Big, 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 big. Um, education is not going away, uh, but I know that they're looking for teachers now that have creative ways of teaching online and engaging students um, online um, and social services the same way because you know we're kind of doing this hybrid some states are doing a hybrid some are on, totally online um, looking for teachers and in, in social services that are creative in hitting uh, how people learn, how kids learn. I mean, I know me, I'm online. I've learned, you know, how to do different ways, you know, games and <clears throat> office hours and um, things that I've never done before online. And I'm constantly researching best practices that's the kind of educators we want to have. And quite frankly, the millennials and the Zoomers know the best about technology. So they're primed to be future teachers and uh, that's a great opportunity for them. Same with nurses and, and PAs. And Excellent. The end, Dr. Sanchez, I'm sorry, uh, Catherine, I just wanted to, to interject the, the um, the comment you said before about certifications, I have a kind of a follow up question and a comment. Of course, Connect Campus, as well as a TCC, has a, a very wide number and a wide variety of certifications. So, you know, uh, there is there is plenty of opportunity there in terms of subjects. Um, let me ask you quickly. Um, uh, do you see uh, and maybe you alluded to this in your in your uh, uh, lecture, if you will. Uh, do you see a lot of people changing careers through certifications after COVID? And, and if so, can you can you either forecast or tell us what it is? Yes, thank you for that question. So people who were going for a business degree, OK, Dr. Morales, are still going for the business degree uh, because they want to understand business, but they're also going for Microsoft certification, communication IT, because um, those are the skills that are necessary now that um, go across all departments of an organization, mm -hmm. right? So a biz, it, it used to be if you didn't have, you know, a four-year degree, you wouldn't get a job in business. Well, now it's business but all these certifications mm -hmm. that make you more competitive because those are the skills, right, that you need, particularly in technology. Um, so yes, I see, I see that very much changing. Okay, right all now. right. Thank you, thank you. Catherine, back to you if there are any other questions. I have another one, but I will for yours, for yours first. All right, perfect. Um, so kind of on that same note, one of our final questions from our participants here um, was about what employers could do um, in terms of identifying uh, critical thinking skills in candidates to improve success in the workforce. And so um, the specific question is, how uh, can employers quantify critical thinking of candidates? And what do we need to do as employers, I believe, to improve um, how we check that students uh, have critical thinking skills? So there's um, employers now because of this COVID um, is doing more assessments online. 
So there's critical thinking assessments, there's technology assessments. Um, you know, the assessment world has blown up uh, because employers are using that more uh, to assess candidates and they're using it to find out their current employer employee base about what people need. And so they're they're really investing uh, in the people that they have and what do they need to stay competitive in that company. Um, and it, you know, it, it, it takes a company that's really committed to their employees to do that. So let me let me just uh, give a LinkedIn mm -hmm. at the bottom when you put your skills in, there's a bunch of assessments. And if you take those assessments, it's kind of like a badge, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a ton of assessments in LinkedIn leadership and all these other things, mostly IT. But if you take the assessment, it's a badge that puts on your LinkedIn, which finds you better for recruiters like me. Perfect, thank you, Dr. Sanchez. And one final thing, um, and then I wanna hand it over to you, Dr. Morales. Um, a really great question here about skills match uh, in the video that you'd showed us. Where can uh, participants find that uh, resource skills match? So I was um, I uh, think you said that my presentation is recorded and let me just go. Can you still see my presentation? Um, actually, we're we're actually seeing you currently. Oh, OK. Oh, gosh. I wish you had told me I would have taken my glasses off. <laughs> um, it's it's a YouTube and um, you know Dr. Morales, I, I sent the vi the link out to sure. uh, your your group. Absolutely, it's free, uh, and it only takes about ten minutes. What Perfect. we can do, what I we will can send do that in the you. chat. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. To and over to you, Dr. Morales. Yeah. Thank you. And a, a couple of questions really quick because of uh, the time. Um, you mentioned LinkedIn and technology and everything. I know that, uh, and you mentioned this through the through the session, you are very active on, on LinkedIn. Uh, and of course, you gave us the, the advice that is the professional place, you know, and a nice picture and all those type of things. Um, what, what, what else is happening on LinkedIn that people need to know? Uh, as they, you know, up their game and up their prospects for for, you know, the next opportunity they they, they want to do or find. So um, recruiters like me can search your profile on LinkedIn and we are looking for these skills, the 21st century skills. So like I have three jobs I'm recruiting for right now. I look for the badges. I look for the skills that are on your profile. The important part for you as, as people looking for a job is you got to have a professional picture. Um, I don't look at people who have other pictures. Um, well organized, uh, people can look at my LinkedIn. Um, it's just got to be very um, professional. Mm -hmm. and, and um, a video, I always love somebody doing a professional video. Um, their, their resume can be updated there. Um, you know, the other thing is share if you've got any um, professional TED Talks you want to uh -huh. share with people. That's another great way to get your name mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Let me let me put you in a in a difficult situation. You talk about the the you know how it will be in the future after COVID, the workplace and all that. Can you can you talk or maybe forecast a uh, about remote work? Oh yeah. What will what will be you know how or what will be that picture in the future? I think it's how it is now, uh, except more team. Uh, oriented brainstorming. I think right now, Dr. Morales, it's more about meetings, 
right? Uh, updating meetings, uh, uh, but I see more team brainstorming. How do we um, enhance our business? Um, you know, I used to work for the airline business too. How are we going to attract our customers? How are we going to keep our customers? Mm -hmm. What kind of ways can we outreach for safety? Those kind of discussions, I think, are going to be more and more through this communication. And right now, what we're doing is mitigating what's happening. I think for my forecasting, we're going to start getting into business 2021. How are we going to function as a business uh -huh. online? OK, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for for that uh, perspective. Um, well, I think that um, we are complete for for this afternoon. Um, we really appreciate your time and enjoy the conversation as well as the advice has been very, very um, educational uh, uh, for for me. You know, I always learn something uh, in, in every instance. So we appreciate the time. Thank you for your wisdom and knowledge, uh, sharing that with us and uh, be well. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to educate uh, what I love. So, and anybody can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Thank you. Thank you. All right.